Okay, so we're here once again in Mining Simulator 2 and for today's video I'm going to go over some different things that you should never ever do when it comes to this game because honestly it's either not worth it or it'll actually hurt you in the long run. So yeah, let's just go straight through it. I've got a couple things written down here on a list that we can basically go through. So yeah, let's just get straight into it. So this first one is a little bit of a half and half one. It more or less depends on where you are in the game. Now, if you are a player like myself, who has a very strong team, as you can see right here, this team is absolutely insane in terms of the mining power and stuff like that. It, but basically, if you have a team that's actually already really strong and is already doing more than enough mining power to hit their last block or like the strongest block in the game and still insta mine it, then this basically what you do not need to do is buy any of these rebirth tools. So as you can see, the last rebirth tool that I actually bought was the Riptide and that was from the Summer Fair event. And I've literally not bought the Sweet Scoops or the Abyssal Trident since then for the main reason being they are very, they're pretty expensive when it comes to the gems and they don't exactly offer much of a reward or anything like that. So as you can see right now, the Sweet Scoops is 2,250 and the Abyssal Trident is only 500 mining power more and only 60 times speed more but it's 20,000 more gems which is kind of crazy plus if you have already bought the sweet scoops then that's 45,000 plus the 65,000 right there you're spending over 110,000 gems on two tools which really will not give you much of a boost whatsoever so yeah as you can see the riptide right now as it's maxed out is doing more than these things than they are base so to be honest the riptide for me right now is more than enough and the funny thing is as well on top of this is if i actually just quickly open up the debug menu real quick with my team equipped and then i actually go ahead and equip the wooden pickaxe as you can see i'm still doing way more than enough to actually insta mine the last block so yeah sometimes tools really are not worth buying and depending on where you are in the game you can probably just start to ignore them especially since those two there will cost you 110,000 gems combined so yeah the first one is just basically don't really buy the expensive tools because it's not really worth it in the long run and there's better ways to basically spend your gems so yeah now this next one is probably something that not many people really do anyways however if you are one of these people then honestly i would just 100 percent say stop but yeah basically never ever use these low gem factory options 30 minutes for 212 gems may seem great however you're not exactly going to get anything and these further down options are way way better so yeah if we're comparing real quick there's 10 minutes 35 billion shells for 250 gems i guess it's a really quick and nice way to get some gems however in the long run you're actually getting less gems for the shells than you may think and this option down here, the 4 hours for the 2 trillion shells to get 10,000 gems. Obviously again it does depend on like whether you have the times to get the gems game pass and things like that. But for me, right now down here at the bottom, this option is so so strong. And of course you do have to wait 4 hours to get your gems, which may seem pretty bad. But comparing that here to this 2 hour one, where you only get around 10, well you get around 12,000 gems here, maybe like close to 15,000 gems. You are actually getting a lot less gems overall so the bottom like the, the lower down the option the stronger it is and obviously this does like kind of restart again depending on like where the currency is but yeah this 10 minutes option in a long term run is going to be way worse for you than this 4 hour option so I would always recommend using these 4 hour options and as of right now as well in the game getting shells is fairly easy so honestly it's not really too much of a bother anyways but yeah i would always recommend using the like the, the longest most expensive option because in the long run it's going to really help you out and it's actually going to be the cheapest and fastest option as well now this next one is something that i have always 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 hated in this game and that is the explosives so in this game right now there's not really many explosives because there's not been one released since the start of the game and i've always been asking for a, some sort of revamp to bring them back to the game but yeah honestly explosives really aren't worth it maybe right at the start of the game when you are first starting out going through your first rebirth then it may possibly be worth it however honestly it really don't give you that much of an advantage you may be able to get like a couple more blocks here and there 
but honestly overall I would say avoid the explosives because really they're just not worth it that much and they really don't don't do that much damage and comparing it as well to like the maximum damage explosive in the game which I think only does around 500 damage honestly even if you get down to the crystal cavern it's not even going to be able to insta mine one block so yeah the explosives right now in the game are very weak and I would say avoid them at all costs and speaking of explosives that brings us on to some of the game passes including the omega nuke and the omega scythe game pass so as you can see right now even with the whole game pass sale with 50 percent off this omega scythe is still the most expensive game pass in the game even if all the other ones were still at their full price it would still be 750 robux more than the next game pass which shows how expensive the omega scythe is now overall I think this is like one of the best pickaxes in the game but as we saw before once you get to a certain point in the game the pickaxes really start to become like useless the wooden pickaxe will be just as strong as the omega scythe so honestly I would say avoid the omega scythe for how much it's worth you may as well go ahead and get other game passes to make yourself even stronger if you want to get the omega scythe game pass now I'd say avoid it get triple hatch get times two gems get maybe infinite backpack and more pets and that way then it's going to make it a lot easier to get that mining power instead of just you know buying out 1749 robux and once this goes up to full price again that brings you up to like what is it nearly like 3000 4000 robux it's quite expensive and really not worth it and again the omega nuke really not worth it like i think this is the one that does 500 power and obviously that is nowhere near enough so honestly stay well clear of the omega nuke because it is the worst game pass in the game by far now this next one again moving on with some more of like the robux things that is buying coins and gems now at the start of the game it may seem tempting to spend the 10 robux to 45 robux on getting 10,000 to 45,000 coins and honestly I would say 10 robux for 10,000 coins isn't really that bad and probably I would have done it as well it does give you a nice little boost however these more expensive options like 250,000 1 million 4.5 million coins for 2,000 robux these ones are 100% not worth it for the simple fact that honestly it's really not going to give you that much of a boost at that point in the game and if you're going to spend 2000 robux again you may as well go get some other game passes and things there's so many different options in the game to spend that 2000 robux on instead of just getting that 4.5 million coins so yeah if this is going to be your first resort to spending your robux avoid it at all costs go get some game passes instead and that's the same for the gems again honestly none of these options are worth it whatsoever at the start of the game like right right when the game launched i would have said that these may have been pretty good options because the only way to get gems was to rebirth and it was quite a long grind so at the start of the game these were actually quite worth it just to be able to get those rebirth tools and stuff however now in the game there's so many different ways of getting gems as you saw before i could get 10,000 gems in four hours which is already more than the current option right there. So I could either wait four hours and get 30, 31,000 gems, or I could just go ahead and spend 840 Robux and get 6,000 gems. Honestly, not worth it. And again, if you are gonna get some Robux and spend it on gems, you may as well open up the season three pass because here you're gonna get a ton more gems as you can see the bottom option if you have times two gems and the season pass you can get 17 and a half thousand gems and all it's going to cost you is like 400 robux which is half the price for more than double the gems so yeah honestly if you're going to get some gems just do the season pass and restart that over and over again it's going to be a really good way to get some strong pets as well you're going to get a lot of boost out of here as well as you can see even i've not claimed some gems there so even more gems for me but yeah there's a ton more gems to claim in here way more than you're going to get for that 840 robux otherwise so yeah do the season pass if you are going to spend the robux and avoid buying gems and i'd say avoid buying coins as well now this next one is probably something that a lot of people do just on the basis that they get really excited and they just want to do a lot of hatching and that is using all of your boosts all at once. So 
really when you use all of your boost depending on how much you actually have you can literally go and hatch for seven days straight and have all of your boost active all at once now the only problem with that is it's most likely you're not going to be hatching for that whole time now if you really are going to go out and hatch for literally seven days straight and never come back until that seven days is up then fair enough but when you are using your boosts, make sure you only use the amount of boost you're going to use when you're at AFK or when you are actually hatching. Say you're going to hatch for two hours, only have two hours worth of boost on. Don't put three, don't put four hours of boost on. Work that out later once you are back and done hatching. But yeah, honestly, don't use all your boost at once. You'll end up wasting a ton of it and don't use all of like just just use the only amount that you actually need to use when you're actually hatching. It's going to save you a lot of boost. Now this next one again is something that I know a lot of people get very excited to do because honestly trading is a very strong part of this game however when you actually do do some trading make sure you know the values some things that i would recommend doing is joining the mining sim or the rumble studios discord server because they have wl channels in there which basically mean that you can check if your trade is a win or a loss or whether it's equal which is always a good thing because if you are going to put your thing in there you may get a major loss and it's a good way of knowing that you're going to lose out or you're going to get some really nice trade so again make sure when you're trading you know what you're doing you know the values and you can ask people who can help you out and help you out with those trades so make sure you join the rumble studios discord server make sure you look at some value lists as well and just make sure you know what you're doing before you start losing out on a lot of good stuff and then this last one is something that I do personally because I'm not really too bothered about value overall, but that is making shiny secrets. Now when it comes to making shiny secrets, you actually lose out on value because in terms of the actual value and way it works for shiny secrets, the fact that you can make them and hatch them actually brings its value down a bit. So usually you think for making a shiny secret, that would basically mean that that secret then becomes four times more valuable because you need four different secrets to actually make it. So you think, if I was to make this 100M trophy here now into a shiny, say it has 1000 value, it would then become 4000 value, but that's not how it works. Instead it becomes more like 3000 value, because usually they actually only times the value by three, which actually means then you're losing out on 1000 value, or you're losing out on a quarter of the value. So if you are gonna make a shiny secret, make sure that you're not gonna lose out on that much value, and make sure that it's going to give you a lot of good stats as well if you are making a shiny secret and it is going to be a very valuable secret honestly i would just recommend not doing that trading all of those secrets individually because then you're going to get a ton more value instead and honestly you're not really going to miss out on that much stats anyway so yeah that's just some things i would say to avoid and not do in a mining simulator let me know what you guys think down below and let me know any other sort of things that you guys should uh, think you should avoid and things like that but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next video